Earlier today, I was doing a team meeting. And so here we are as I record this. It's a Monday right after a weekend of a lot of news going on about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. You know, last week when I closed shop, so to speak, the CDC was making recommendations about group events. And since my company does quite a few group events, their best recommendations were that if there were groups that were larger than 250 people, that those events should be delayed or postponed or even canceled over the course of the next several months. Um, they had certain other recommendations. Schools were in a scattering of places, closed, but mostly they were open and in a little bit of a wait and see place. Then over the weekend, as I paid attention to various county commissioner health offices or, and various state health offices and in the CDC sites, um, they made some changes, right? They're now it's saying if there are groups of 50 or more that they should consider postponing unless they're critical or canceling. Um, schools in many states have been closed. California recently had the governor declare state of emergency and said for people who are in a risk population over a certain age that they should be mandatory quarantining themselves and that bars will be closed. And so these things came out. So you and your business might have many times when things just change quickly in this situation. And so on Monday morning today, about an hour and a half ago, we just did a team meeting. Now, typically on a Monday huddle for us, since we're a virtual company where we have people scattered over essentially a dozen different states, what we do is we get together and have a 15 minute quick huddle. It's a good chance to share information. Um, it's a good chance for people to share victories, really just a chance to connect um, with their peers and their colleagues inside the company. Briefly, 15 minutes, and we switch it up and make variety of how we do that. And then once a month, we do it with a company-wide webcam meeting. Again, just to keep everyone together. It's one way that we keep a, a collective culture, even though we're all in virtual spaces far, far away from each other. This morning, though, we did something different. And I knew we needed to talk to the fears, the concerns that various team members had. And in preparation of that, and I'll do this in a separate recording, I'll talk about the four lines of questions I think that you as a business leader need to ask yourself um, for how do you're going to respond inside of your company to what's going on right now in the world with the coronavirus. But this morning I needed to reassure my team. Um, it's important in you as a leader that you're the voice of certainty in a sea of confusion, that you need to be that congruent voice. Doesn't mean you have to have all the answers because you won't always have all the answers. Right now there's a lot of unknowns about what's going on but there are some things they should be able to rely on you on. So I want to share with you what I share with my team. I started off talking with them about, look, I started my first um, successful company back in 1996, early 97. So for a quite some period of time, for almost 25 years, um, I've been in business. The world has come to an end multiple times. And I use the world is coming to an end in quotation marks. You know, the world came to an end with Y2K, and yet somehow we're still here. In 2001, um, with 9-11, the world came to an end, yet somehow we're still here. In the dot-com bust, the world came to an end, yet somehow we're still here. With the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, as those accelerated and, and happened in the early 2000s and then stretched on and on, yet somehow we're still here. With the SARS and then the MERS outbreaks, the world came to an end, yet somehow we're still here. And then with a few years ago, the Ebola breakout and all the fears and hysteria around that, the world came to an end, and yet we're still here. 2007, with the subprime meltdown, the world came to an end, and yet somehow we're still here. And then in 2008, in October, when the market crashed and the Great Recession began, the world came to an end, yet somehow we're still here. And I told my team, I don't mean to minimize the pain and the, the challenges that came with these different periods of, 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 of events. Um, these events that were on various levels of 
uh, uh, various levels of, of intensity, but somehow businesses and countries found their way through them. And I believe strongly, I know it, I have deep faith that we're going to get through this stuff too. And at the same time, there are going to be opportunities where we can serve greater and create more value there for our clients out there in the world. And we're going to be okay. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that, that there's not going to be some real painful pieces that we have to go through, but we're going to find our way through this to make the most of a situation that is in some ways outside of our control. And just hearing that to remind ourselves that the world has come to an end multiple times helps us to separate out the hype and hysteria from the media with the information that matters. And I talk with my team about the information sources that we're paying attention to. You know, the, the county and the state health departments, um, the CDC websites. If we see a headline in a reputable paper, we're going back and taking a look at where that headline is, is actually getting its source material. Is it from Johns Hopkins University? Or is it from some survey that was done online by someone who has a particular vested interest in creating a certain viewpoint or narrative? And we're going to stay on top of it. I let my team know that for the next week, I'll be making sure that I reach out to all of them with a group email or a group audio every day for the next week, just so they know what's going on, what my thinking is about that, whether that be a quick 30 seconds or a couple minutes as a message. And then next week, as new information rises, I'll be sharing when we have new information. I explain to them what we're going to be doing in the short run as a business. And I let them know that we don't have all the answers right now. But here are the questions that we're asking. Here's what we're paying attention to. Here's what we're choosing to filter out and what we're not going to accept. We're not going to accept hype. We're not going to accept, hyst accept hysteria. We're not going to accept information sources that just aren't reputable. We're going to be aware of these things and pay good attention and make smart choices here. And then I let it open for my team to share. And seven or eight people on the conference line shared their thoughts. And that was an important part of settling the team down. And to also remind them that we have a real important service that we can do for our marketplace, which is our point of maximum contribution to the world a way that we can add value to the world. You know, we serve small and mid-sized businesses, especially the owners of those businesses. And right now there's uncertainty. How do you handle it? Hence, you know, messages like this. And our goal is for us to model the very best we can, and we'll do it imperfectly, but we'll do it the best that we can, how to handle these situations to make the most of what we can control and to let go of what we can't control and not get wrapped up into a narrative that's spiraling down. The average business owner in today's world right now, they're scared. They're pulling back and cowering in a corner. That's the wrong thing to do. I don't know for every business what the right thing to do is, but I can tell you categorically across the board, hiding, cowering, fear, the wrong response. 100% of the time, the wrong response. Somewhere there, there's an opportunity. And I share with my team how this past weekend, um, we had some of our top clients together and we were brainstorming about this very thing and ideas about how to make the most of the situation. And different ideas I'll share with you down the road as, as this progresses. I'll make sure that I go out to share those ideas and create ways that we can communicate with you and you can communicate with each other about it. But the real message was that what my real takeaway was just by having the conversation, what people realized was, yes, there's going to be some really tough pieces to this, but all of us are going to get through it. And matter of fact, because we're actively looking for ways and opportunities there, we're going to find ways to make some really good opportunities happen. And, and, and so, for example, uh, internally for our company, we realize that uh, we haven't done a great job with how we've done our social media side in the past. It just Again, I think culture comes originally from the founder, and that's not something I paid much attention to. Um, I've had my early experiences you know, eight, ten years ago on Facebook where it was just a mass of junky information, you know, pictures of people's meals and 
um, just nonsensical stuff, people shouting their political beliefs and all those things I really just didn't care to hear about. And so I, as a company, never put much emphasis there. But I realized a few months ago when a client of ours showed us how a different company in a different niche coaching world, and she's a client of both companies, how they're doing it. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea the way they do it. It's meaningful. It's a valuable conversation. It's two ways. It's peer generated where, where we can be participating, but people collectively can go peer to peer and really help serve each other. And we've been thinking about how and when to launch this. Well, for us, one benefit of what's going on, this is the perfect time for us to launch that part because right now people are willing to change behaviors and are very open and hungry for ways to get connection around how to deal with, to best harness what's going on to the benefit for themselves and for their customers. And so that's one way that we've made the most of a situation that is outside of our controls. And I'm hoping that you do the same thing in your business, but it starts with how can you settle and reassure your team? And then from there, moving to settle and reassure your customers. In a separate recording, I'll talk about um, how it is that you um, can be having a more of a systematic way to think through the situation. But for the moment, recognize the first leadership responsibility you have is to settle things down and to help people be in resourceful places. And, and, and we have to address that part first before we can get creative and, and make the most of the situation.